Is it normal to take a crap and... It's just... <laughs> Every week? Welcome to the Late Late Horror Show. Scared what is me. going Every week you start out with so why is it gonna be about crap or dicks or you know peepees or fecal feelings or I'm what? Obsessed with my bowels. Uh, <laughs> That's what happens but, um, when you get to be almost fifty. <laughs> oh my god. But hey, hey uh, I started eating those prunes. Okay, oh I sla- clapped my hand. It probably hurt some ears out there. Hey everybody, I'm Dino. That's Ted as always from the Late Late Horror Show. Uh, we are doing some uh, dark, depressive are we really? Yeah. You know. We, w- we went depressive this week. Yeah, so po- everybody, it's Poe, man. It's Edgar Allan Poe, man. It's, 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 the, it's, it's the his... ultimate goth chick writer. Goth chick writer? What are you talking about? Man, come but on. I can't I can't wait to talk about this. Um, Hanging out by the cemetery, t- reading Poe. And talk, talk, talk. Oh, yeah, the goth chick. Trying okay. to make yourself seem like a nonconformist, but you're actually just trying to draw more attention to yourself. The South by, Park. You know, uh, you, yeah. know you conformists. Conformities. Conformities. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I mean, when, when you dive deep into, you know, his life and everything, man, yeah, it's, it's very... And we'll talk about Edgar Allan Poe a little bit here, too. You will. Uh, what, oh, my God, what a life Do you know had, Sylvester Ted? Stallone wanted what to do an Edgar Allan Poe movie and play Poe? Stallone, Sly. Did he really? Yeah. That good for him. He would have had He's the, a huge stop fan the of it, steroids, I mean. and he would have had to have, uh, yeah, got skinny and and and. I think he could do it. Bald, I think he could pull it off. Do a balding a little bit on the head, and and, and he'd be good to go. Makeup but, can do wonders. Yeah, but no, no, it, it, it's it, like I said, it was a very depressive life that he held and, and no wonder he went the direction he did and to die at the an early age of 40 years old and That's we'll right. talk about that a little bit too but here, we're here to talk about in the gutter another vincent price movie directed by uh the great roger corman do we really say the great well you know well ted we like the cheesy we I like do. the different I mean, um, he's not a Hitchcock or a Kubrick. Or, nowhere near it. But of Dan, course not. the guy knows how to make but, a crowd pleaser. <laughs> Let's just say that. Right. And he also does that. Well, he, he started going into some of those like biker chicks, uh, exploitation I like type movies. I like those movies. And, and those were interesting. Nothing he, wrong with biker chicks. That he went, no. I used to Leather and lace. Chick, man. Put them in their place. Name what? Mud flap. Mud flap. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, That's geez. from Bob's Burgers. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> mud, mud flap. flap. Oh, Bob's Burgers. <laughs> A great animated series, the, if you haven't watched it. The vagine hangs like a mud flap. The vagine. It's a slap <laughs> like this. It hangs like sleeve of wizard. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the things we talk about. Celtic girl, not late. You are early today. and we. I'm are, really glad to hear you're not late. Yeah, Because we're late. <laughs> late. Another month. Oh, jeez. Yeah, no. <laughs> you don't want to be uh, late, Celtic that's Girl. That's a bad show. Ay, ay, ay. As always, people, uh, check out all the links below. Uh, our patron, uh, I got to, let's see, where is it at here? Uh, thank you to all our patrons on Patreon. Uh, for as little as a buck, you can get an extra video each week. If How many of those care. names are legit? Um, yeah, let's see <laughs> here. Um, oh, so the, there we go. Um Celtic girl, uh, thank you very much for showing up. Um, Why aren't you adding more it? names? Just you know, Chester, um, <laughs> Chester so, Copperpot, Chester <laughs> Copperpot. <laughs> you know, Harry Houdini's come back from the dead. Um, yeah, uh, the Build fall, it up. Of, the fall of the House of Usher, 1960. Uh, Roger Corman, he did uh, a couple. He, he did The Raven. He did uh, Mask of the Red Death. What are you talking about? The, the Vincent Price. He created movies. a franchise inadvertently. Uh, exactly. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Prior to 1960. Yes. Roger Corman been churning out movies. He sure, certainly had. Working pretty often with American International Pictures. Picture, yes. Um, yes. 
Oh. And what they did at the time... He, internationally. Internationally. What they specialized Man. in before this film. Oh, wait. Can I, pl- can I say that this episode of The Late Late Horror Show is brought to you by Can Do You Who. And uh, Trooper. Yes, so there you go. Uh, this week's sponsor. Not sponsored, but should be. Yeah. Well, that uh, one. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> now I'm going to get sued by me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Uh, hey, 80s horror fan. Hi, Ted and Dino. What is up, uh, up? Raiders AK? Just Mine about to tell is you legit. A bunch of info you don't need. Yeah. Um, a bunch. No, we got some good stuff tonight good stuff. with uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Prior to 1960, yeah. AIP churned out B pictures. Yes, they you, did. You know, 10 days a piece, churn them out, maybe 100,000 bucks a piece. And they would be like, the B, you know, a lot of double features back at that time were drive in pictures. And well, even this there was movie, always like a crappy one that it, came after, and this, it, they it, did the crappy ones. Uh, continue, but even this movie consists of four actors yes. shot in kind of one location. Right. So, so gun. Typically black and white, cheap. So um, black and white, cheap. AIP Just approached like I like them. Corman about, hey, let's do a couple pictures, and he said, well, how about we take. The, for the, the money for two pictures. Yeah, spit it put out. Put it together. Uh-huh. Let's maybe make it in color and make one big picture. Wow. Maybe, you know, make a good picture. He had an idea for House of Usher. It, wait, if people don't know by right now that Ted is spinning yarn. Oh, and, yeah. and telling a great tale. No, this, this is what actually happened. One you guys will be telling your kids for years to come. Continue. I remember that time I heard Ted talking about House of Usher on it. Ah, it was on that YouTube's. Yeah. What? What's the YouTube's? Oh, you want subscribe you don't, you and don't hit know bells? The YouTube's. You want subscribe <laughs> and hit bells and stick your fingers in poops. Shoops. Some. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, continue. Some people do. Get out of hand. Uh, sometimes. so they went with that, and you, you wouldn't think people would have lined up around a block to see a <laughs> Victorian era. Kind of, kind of horror movie. Story Gothic But yeah. yeah, they did. They wouldn't anymore. But um, so do I. Uh, so to and so it, it made home. it made quite a bit of money. Right. So naturally, let's keep going. Let's, let's keep, keep going. going. So um, he had no plans to do more Poe pictures because yeah. this was the one he really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. But then it turned out to be so successful that they did eight of them. Holy Seven of them shit. with Vincent Price. No. And uh, I'll talk about those on Patreon because I, I brought all Damn. kinds of stuff with me. Oh, yeah. T- it Again, ended up being a, a mini, mi- a you're, mini you're, franchise. You're missing out on a lot of good stuff on Patreon if you're not there. Just saying. Um, I always bring some goodies, yeah, something from my shelf Ted's, at home. So we will be talking. Well, what are the movies, though? We can say we the did, movies. Uh, talk they about did the Pit and the Pendulum. Yes, um, they did. Mask the Raven. of the Red Death, The Raven. Yep. They did, without Vincent Price, The Premature Burial, that had... Um, they didn't think they were going to do that movie, but... They had Ray Milland instead Prematurely, of, they, they... Premature. Tales of Terror, which is three short little features. And there's The Haunted Palace. There's The Tomb of Lygia. And there's one more that's escaping me at the moment. I can't remember. Uh, hey, give me. It's all. It's all right. No, I but have to remember. You must remember. Uh, <laughs> but yes, they were very, and they weren't. Ha- they were kind of hammerish kind of movies, right? In it, that it, it, in that gothic sense where there yeah. was a castle and everything, I think Hammer <laughs> definitely, you know. I mean, they, they were just following suit. Uh, right. Dracula, The Mummy, Curse of Frankenstein, those had all just started, those, the old universal monsters, those were going out. Yeah. And they uh, we hadn't quite got to the, the yeah, the, we hadn't quite got to where, you know, like the late 60s and 70s were going to bring us. So you had that whole period in the 60s. Hammer was just starting, so everybody kind of wanted to get their own little, you know, this gothic thing seemed to be working. Let's let's do something with that. Well, that's what's working. This that's gothic. right. And it's bugging the hell out of me that I can't remember that picture's name. So oh. don't mind me flapping through my no. my but, things here. But, yeah, it consists of four characters, This the Fall of the House of Usher. Uh, veers a little bit off of the actual story where they throw in... Oh, I uh, did name them all. Never did mind. You? I did name them all. But, but this movie... Uh, I kind, knew kind, I did. Kind of veers off the story a bit. A little bit. Where they, not a whole lot, but not a little a lot, bit. Not a lot, actually. You know, whereas the book is, is you know, the narrator is brought in to the story. Right. And in the movie, you know, you need Mo- kind of a love A lot of those stories are told from that first person. Narrative, yeah. So, 
you got to give the guy a name. Right. And so, so but in the movie they bring uh they bring in an actor to play the love interest of uh of Madeline. Um his, his name Philip What is it? No, Win- his name's Bristol. That's the That's the butler. That's the butler. Uh, Philip <laughs> Winthrop. Philip Winthrop is right. his name. So this is a made-up um, character. Yeah. And the fact that he's but they needed a engaged to um, Madeline, Madeline Usher. Usher. Is, that's another invention. for this. There is a Madeline Usher in the story, Not of the, course. Mm, no, no, but no, 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 the whole little love interest thing yeah, okay. works for the movie. Yes, it, it does. You know, for the story, you don't need it. In the story, he's going to visit his friend, Roderick Usher. Roderick Usher. Um, Played by Vincent Price, who... In this movie, kind of one of he he veers off his usual strong, you know, kind of character. He's not as hammy. He's kind of weak, which goes towards the poem itself. I mean, the story itself. He even wanted himself to be. He lost weight for the for the role. Thin, frail. Wanted himself to be very pale, and it was his idea to do the hair. Do the hair white because like he should look like he's never been outside. You know, he's just all pale. And, and he couldn't get as pale as he probably wanted. He said, what do I do? And he you know, dyed the hair blonde. Yes. And there you go. But um, And uh, so the ushers... Celtic girl, oh. real quick, in the YouTube oh, chat, says, uh, Haunted Palace, super cheesy. I love it. Ha ha. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Christian, uh, how are you doing, bud? Uh, good to see you guys again. Uh, good to have you in the chat. Thank you. Um, and yeah. I like Haunted Palace, but it's actually more based on a... Lovecraft story than a Poe story. Right. The title's pretty much from a Poe poem, but the story yeah. is the strange case of Charles Dexter Ward. Right. That, which is H.P. Lovecraft. Lovecraftian. And it's got Lon Chaney in it, too. So, I mean, that's Can't all. Can't go that's, wrong. That's cool, too. Heck yeah. But uh, so they made this gothic, romantic sort of picture. Yes. Um, and it's about this fellow named Philip Winthrop who's going to visit his uh, betrothed. In her home, they were together in Boston and were madly in love. And so, and, and like all those old movies, they fell in love, I think, within two hours. And yeah, said, it was pretty simple. Will you marry me? It was less complicated yeah, back then. It was. You know, yeah. people weren't bitching about every little <laughs> thing, you know? <laughs> Will you marry me? And I'm mildly attracted to you. I'm mildly attracted to you. We mm. come from good families. Let's get married. Done deal. Yeah, and then she takes off back to her brother or her family estate. Family estate. And um, you know, he said, "I will come to you one day oh, and yes. marry you on horseback." And when he is riding right? through horseback, it's yeah. very desolate. Oh, um, does that is a very cool scene coming up on the horseback? You know how that, the, 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 there was actually a fire in some woods there. Okay, Corman heard about it. Let's go shoot. Let's go shoot. Oh, and really? they okay. shot in this burned up forest area. Just this is a few of these scenes. To, so again, because okay, it's cool. really got a cool look. It wasn't on a set. It was you know, yeah. a real location. Um, and when he arrives, at first, the uh, the butler's not even going to let him in. The no, no, horror no. fan goes, betrothed. Betrothed. <laughs> it's such a good word. It is a good word. I mean, yeah. he's got to go get this girl. I mean, he is balls deep in love with her. Ooh. Yeah. Sorry. No. <laughs> don't be sorry. Balls deep They're in balls love. Balls deep in that hole. Um... <laughs> And yeah, you ever put that in the balls in? It's, oh, anyways, mm. go ahead. Um, yeah, go on. It's dangerous to do that. And and you already <laughs> feel a little funny, like when he when he is finally, you know, he yeah. insists that he be seen. He's being told that. Oh, don't talk about know, cysts, man. Cysts. I'm sorry. Yeah. Insists. Oh, well, that's bad too. Uh, well, that's a, kind of a little thing going oh, on in this yeah. movie. Oh yeah, that there is cool. almost a little incestuous. Yeah. Relationship with Roderick and, and, and Madeline, yeah. You know, it's it's more of an implied more more thing. Roderick side, I think. You know, mm-hmm. with um, that's a little thing in there too. Mm. You gotta, you know, pull it out. And again, I, I think you know all these stories come from deep within Edgar Allan Poe and everything he Balls went deep through. From within, yeah. which which we'll eventually talk about. And you you say incestuous. Um, he he had a. It's a, there. Yeah, Whether it was in real life and in the little, story too. Yeah, it's the a, cousin. A thirteen-year-old uh, cousin uh, marrying. Uh, that was pretty much okay. Virginia back then, Clem. Um, I know back then, but it's still think about it nowadays. But well, yeah, well, we got nowadays. But you go back uh, 150 years ago. I mean, Jiminy, Cricket's, people weren't as civilized. I mean, there was uh, you know. Celtic girl in the YouTube chat says, "Girl in Haunted Palace was pretty." Can't mm-hmm. remember her name. Uh, 
If you, if, if Ted can't if you remember get, a name, if you get the hey. Patreon, I, I'll be able to look up the credits here in my little Blu-ray bag. Yeah, that I have. yeah. But uh, don't you like when he goes in and, and the butler tells him he's got to take his boots off? Yeah, it, 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 you're like you know. I mean, everybody point. takes their shoes off when you come in. It's like, why should I take my boots off? They've got horse shit on them, and <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? yeah. but it, you know, it's because the ushers, especially Roderick, are afflicted with hypersensitivity to their senses, uh, meaning yeah, you know, hearing, seeing, touching. Yep. Like you touch him, you be, oh, you know. What I does mean, he say? Only the blandest of food. Yeah. You know, taste. Even a candle light is smell hurts his eyes. Yeah. Flowers are out of the question. The yeah. in, well, I don't know if he says it in the in the story, but in the in the book for sure about the only sounds he can tolerate are from that lute. Yeah, because yeah. he does play that. What was the Vincent Price movie where where he he got with the black roses and a trellis? What what was that movie? You remember? Black roses and a trellis. I I, I can't remember. I, I thought it was this movie, but it ended up not being. It might be. Was it a was it was it wearing dark glasses in this one by any chance? I think so. Might have been Tomb of Lygia then. I can't recall. Maybe. They all okay. kind of... Anyways, it, it was a very vivid memory that I had stuck there. But anyways, yeah, sensory overload right. uh, is what he has. Yeah, he says, I could hear you. And actually, this this is great Vincent Price acting here when he says, you know, I could hear you, you know, coming. I could hear your horse coming. I can, when, even when he finally says, I can hear the rats scratching <laughs> in the wall. Raiders AK says, my couch pulls out, but the story doesn't. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Felix. Interesting. Let me know what you mean by that. I, I don't know either. I'm dumb and I don't. I'm not catching on to the phrase. You're too old, man. You're okay, but but yeah, he tells him to take take his boots off and mm-hmm. and and I think what's funny is he tells him to put these shoes on and yeah. and somehow. They made these shoes softer than his boots, I guess. I guess you know? I don't know. Maybe they're just little leather slippers. I guess I don't maybe know. soft heels, and, um, specially made just for him. So he's kind of arguing with Roderick a little bit. You know how, you know we're engaged, yeah. and you know they have their little. I don't know if it's before. What Mad- the Madeline does show up at the door, yeah. and they're reunited. Um, I don't know if this conversation is before or after that. Yeah. Uh, where Usher, you know, is is explaining, you know, a, like a family curse that the curse itself has seeped into the house and the soil. One of the selling points for the movie is they didn't want to do it without some kind of a creature, some kind of a monster. Right. And Corman had to tell him the house is the monster. Right, right. Yeah. Now, in the story, that's not really true. But Well, you can take it two ways. It's mm-hmm. It's the fall of the house. Of Usher, or the fall of the house of the... Well, the Usher. things that happen in the film, it, it, like the, two the, the strange little coincidences, like where it seems like the house is trying to get rid of yeah. um, like the, Winthrop, yeah. those, that doesn't happen. Little flames There's actually no the romantic fireplace. story at all in the... The story. chandelier from above right. falls, you know, so... so but he, he says, hey... There's a fissure, you know, mm-hmm. there's a crack. Oh, yes, he notices that when he's that going go, in there. Goes straight down from the top of the building all the way down. And that's definitely in the book, too, from the top to deep into the which moat. Always, which got me when I was watching this movie, I'm like going, you know, because Roderick, Vincent, Vincent Price's character, uh, kept saying, you know, it's, it's. I mean, the house is shaking, mm-hmm. you know. You would figure... The butler's like, ah, it's to the point where I don't even notice it anymore. I'd be scared we're going down, man. Yeah. I mean... Don't you think that should be repaired? <laughs> especially when um, uh, uh, Philip uh, Winthrop is, is in his room, opens up the door when everything's shaking like that. The mm-hmm. window, I mean, uh, looks out and sees the crack and the shatter and going all the way down to the... I believe it's like some kind of weird greenish... Lake or something like, like a, that. Probably like a moat or a pond or yeah, something. Yeah, but I'm like going... Yeah, probably a lake. I think, matter of fact, even Vincent oh. Price mentioned something about that, how it, you know, this used to be all green, fertile farmland. It was, yeah. But just the sickness. When he starts describing the family, and this isn't in the story either, about what, uh, you know, different member, he takes them on a tour of the family portraits and who they were and the horrible yeah. things they've done. Right. And just saying that the sickness from the Usher bloodline has just seeped in and it's made this whole territory, you know, uninhabitable. It's almost color out of space. Yeah. It, it, it makes you wonder, like, what actually happened to that land yeah. that made it die, that's you know? What, you know that's, but, I mean, he's, they say it's the curse of the Usher right. family. And that's why he's and, afraid to have Philip marry his daughter. 
I mean, his daughter, his, his sister, sister. He even says, you know, were circumstances different, I'd welcome you. But, you know, if you're going to have children, the bloodline's going to continue. I, I can't allow it. And it's going it. to spread. It'll spread. It'll spread to different areas, He's like, different just, countries. We're dying. That's what he says. We're dying. Yeah. And it, it just reminds me so much of a, a lot of... Remember the little Tim Burton movie, Vincent? Yeah. Vincent Price. Of course. When, when he's, you know, when he's laying when, on the floor and he's like, I'm dying. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the House of Usher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the mother's like, you're well, not dying. <laughs> Go out and play. I wonder, wonder if he took that well, a bit from the, well, <clears throat> this movie. Vincent but. can just do that kind of character so well. You yeah. know, we may not look it, but we are dying. Yeah, yeah. And even in the story, you know, when, when he comes to visit, when the narrator comes to visit his friend, you know, he does see Madeline just kind of walk by and he's, you know, he even says something to the effect like it's probably the last time you're going to see her because, you know, yeah. she's going to die soon. <laughs> you know, like, and there's and never again, a thought to it. <laughs> and again, a lot of this, these things come from uh, Edgar Allan Poe, his real life. I mean, uh, lots of people ended up. I mean, first couple years of his life, his real parents die. Uh, eventually, most of the people around him die in one way or, or the other from TB. Mostly, uh, bad problem back in the early 1800s. Right. Um, the TB. Yeah, the TBs. But um, yeah, a lots of that, even like you know, psychotic episodes and things of that nature that were brung on by other illnesses and stuff like that. Even his own death, which we'll save that for later. And of course, a but, final um, descent into terrible alcoholism and yeah, poverty. Yeah. You know, he was never wealthy. No, all of that stuff. So, so to. To put a character like Vincent Price in, in, you know, in this story, Roderick, his character to be, you, you almost wonder, is he really, is there really something wrong with him? Or is he being, you know, you know, kind of hypochondria is, is set into his brain to where, to where it's overcome his senses and, mm-hmm. and made him what he is. It has nothing to do with the house um, and, and pushing it all onto his, his sister, who also... Starts to bring that, you know, to right. life. It was with, almost with like as soon that, as she you know? got back to the house, there's like a, a malaise. Right. You, you you get everything sucked out of you. And actually, even in the story, the narrator feels a little bit of that. Yeah. It's like the place is just so oppressive that you, you start to feel, you know, weaker and, and right. darker and, and melancholy. You know, it's just something about this area. So, yeah. you know, he's desperately... The chat's burning up. Hold on. Oh, it's on Uh, fire. Oh, no, we're good. Okay. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Stupid. Goddamn chat burning Um, the frick up. So he's desperately, you know, trying to get Madeline away. Oh. You know, Roderick's asking him to leave. He's like, if if that's your wish, but I'm not going by myself. Yeah. I'm taking her with me. Right. And she almost doesn't want to go, almost like like a... battered woman who wants to stay in mm-hmm. a horrible situation you know i can't exactly. leave my brother that's you know, exactly what i, I thought just leave him but you know he's like is this what you want you want to sit here and die and waste away yeah. and um, if he keeps telling you you're gonna die you're gonna die mm-hmm. so yeah let's if you love me get the hell out of here and right. he even wakes up early to get some let's breakfast. get a cheap joint up on the, the lower east side you on know? the lower east side of yeah, boston yeah. we'll go live in charlestown yeah, say. he gets uh you know gets her some breakfast one morning and he's like how about some eggs and bacon and fresh freeze oh no sir no sir we only serve gruel <laughs> gruel, gruel. <laughs> and like oh right two That's... bowls of hot gruel <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine man oh my kids ask me because they watch it what gruel is gruel. I'm like, well, I know it's kind of like oatmeal, yeah. maybe just not as good. No taste, not as good. Yeah, yeah kind of. Kind of like you're just chewing on a cud. <laughs> Guests are to bring their own honey. I guess. So, and, yeah. um, hmm. you know, he takes it up there. She won't eat a bite. She won't drink anything. And, and he's, t- the before that, the, the butler. The before Bristol, times. The before they for. They call it. He's telling him, you know, I've been here over 60 and years. Down. You know, when this house yeah. goes, I go. Right. You know, like, he's resigned himself to the fact, too. Oh, well, man. You know. What a character. What a pitiful character that... Now, Vincent in the story, Price there are a couple... Like, there's, like, a valet, and there are a couple of people that work for them, but not many. Kind of like the movie, there's just a few characters. Yeah, yeah. But they could only employ, you know. Mm-hmm. Roger Corman was told, Full actors! Full, that's it! And, and no, none of them can be Dick Miller! 
<laughs> None of them could be Dick Miller. Yeah, because usually Dick Miller's in Roger Corman movies. Yeah. Um, it must be Dick Miller. And even in, in the story, you know, he's trying to cheer his friend up, Roderick. Yeah. And it's it almost seems like nothing he does can cheer him. He's, it's almost like, what's the point of trying to cheer him up right. when he doesn't want to be cheered up? He doesn't want to be happy. Yep. Um, I, I do like the conversation. I, oh, I think I already mentioned where they he and Roderick have on the balcony. He says, you know, this was all nice and green and all that. I mean, we talked about that. Already. Yeah, yeah. And, and in the story, there ends up being like this green fog or mist that's outside surrounding the estate. Yeah, they, maybe they don't really little... mention it in here, do they? Do, do they no, but I mean, that could just be like swamp gas or, you know, some of that yeah, natural swamp, swamp gas. Yeah, I had some before yeah. we went live. And he hiked that <laughs> leg up, did a one-cheek sneak. <laughs> Smell this One-cheek one sneak. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, I shouldn't have had that chili. <laughs> but well, what, what do we come to find out that Roderick's sister really, she has this th- disease called... Uh, um, catalepsy. Catalepsy. Now, it doesn't That's come it. out right away. It's a fair Cadillac. What happens right? is, oh. you know, we've had these incidents happen where, you know, like chandeliers falling, coals trying to catch them on fire. What else happened? The stairway almost gave way. Right, right. I think that was just bad, so, um, you know, woodsmanship. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's just the house is carpentry. rotting. It's just, it's bad just carpentry. rotting. Yeah. And... He's, he's told one morning, oh, she, she passed in the night. She passed in the night. We've got her laid out in the family chapel. And he's like, I told you. She was, she was about, yeah, she was she about ready to croak. Yeah, we, we yeah. didn't want to wake you. No. We didn't think it was that important. Didn't feel we'd bother you too so much they're in the, there. So they're in the chapel. They're, 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 they're all on kneelers. Yeah. And the cool thing is, if you're watching, you can see her breathing a little bit. Yeah. You could see her fingers moving a little And you see Vincent Price's character, Roderick, yeah. see her fingers moving. And he gets... And ooh, just gets up and like, I can't bear to look lid. at her anymore, closes the lid. He knows damn well she's alive. Right. But he is so but she's hell-bent. Got, but she's got this disease called Calypso. Catalypsy. Catalypsy. <laughs> He's so hell-bent on Cat- destroying oh. the family line. And oh, think, and even before that... I think it's another. from ingesting cat lips when she was younger. Cat lips. Before that, we forgot to mention, she takes... Uh, Philip down to the crypt, the family crypt. Yeah. Shows her her great grandparents, her grandparents. Her parents yeah. is like, you know, and this will be for me. Here's mine. Yeah, I'm ready and, to die. And one of the coffins, like, falls out or something like that. And, oh, you know, skeleton pops Can out. Can you imagine that? So that's another thing that happens. Yeah. So, yeah, she she croaks. and yeah. um, But we know she's still alive. Yeah. And this is actually a thing that happens in a few Edgar Allan Poe stories. Someone being buried alive. Right. You know, the... It's actually in two of these different movies that I've that I've got here. Uh, there's uh, Tales of Terror and yeah. uh, the Premature Burial, obviously. Yeah, yeah. You know where people are just afraid of being buried alive, and that was something that would happen. There were people. I mean, there were people that yeah, yeah. had that you know catalepsy, or you know they looked so damn drunk, you know they thought they were dead or, or something. Well, how like that. how many stories have you heard where people have been dead on the uh, you know? In a body bag and yep. and ended up being buried literally and and you find out that they came to life you know and they, like they, even in the old navy like on ships like yeah. you know captain ships you know they would always when they would put you in the bag to you know bury you at sea they would always take the pin and put a stitch through the nose yeah just in case yeah you know I mean if you jump up <laughs> you know, you're alive yeah, yeah. you know all's good yeah, but yeah. that's why they would do that yeah and um, hook through the nose. Yeah, uh, Celtic Girl from YouTube Chat. What's the film with Vincent as the psychiatrist? Or maybe he's just in the house with the psychiatrist. I can't remember. And uh, 80s horror fans says Swamp Gas in Cleveland. Swamp Gas. Yep. Phil's creepy uh, Darling, videos. if you give me a few more details, I might remember. There's a lot of Vincent Price movies, and I've seen most of them. Where he's a psychiatrist. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't... It's not standing Maybe he's up. in a psychiatrist. Phil's Creepy service. Videos uh, says, what's up, man? Uh, nice to see yeah, you, Phil. Uh, showing off some toys today like he usually does his live videos. Uh, very cool. Excellent. Um, but yeah, psychiatrist. Uh, what's... I don't remember. He it's, played like... In Edward Scissorhand, he was kind of like a doctor, but... He just give me a few more deets, and I, I could probably remember. Yeah. A little bit more info there, Celtic Being girl, a psychiatrist, but. I don't really recall. Although, that would be a great role for him. Yeah. Um, or maybe, but, you know, could possibly... As far as his horror films, I think I've seen them all. 
don't own them all, but yeah, I've seen yeah. them all. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, Aaron Anderson, what is up? Uh, Mr. Anderson. That's why Dwight Schrute <laughs> threw open the coffin and blasted his dead aunt with a shotgun just to make sure <laughs> that's right in the office. Uh, welcome, Aaron Anderson. Yeah, yeah, no. I do not. I'm being burnt. I don't care. that You know, as soon as I die, throw me out in the garage and burn me. Burn me. Burn me. I am I am going in some kind of thing and my ashes and, my, you know, my kids can put me on the mantle. If they have mantle. In I, the I, I want them to put me out for future. Halloween in the front yard. You yeah, know, I think just, so. <laughs> You know, just let the birds landing. come and pick at you. Yeah, just that's not put bad. Put me on back for fertilizer. Use me as a Halloween prop. What I'd really that like way, is, a, is a Viking burial, man. I want to take me out to Lake Erie, put me on a raft, set it on fire, push it. Wait, no, push it out, and then I want like you or somebody to get a bow and arrow, burn fl- you. with a flame and shoot it, and you'll, you'll probably miss about eighty-four times. <laughs> <laughs> you finally get one. No, I'm a good shot, but I'll burn you. But. But see, what will happen <laughs> is the, the boat will f- go down. and because I'm so fat? Yep. <laughs> exactly. And, and you'll, um, the boat will go down. Fat d- floats. <laughs> the boat will go down. You, you'll, the fire will be gone because you're in the water. And you'll somehow survive. And you'll be this burnt-up creature who comes crawling out of the I'll boat. I'll end up in the Arctic Ugh. somewhere. Uh, you know what I mean? So, anyways. Um, <laughs> Phil's creepy video. Uh, crushing it. Thank you very much, my friend, for the uh, super chat. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Um, 80s Horror Fan says, hey, Phil. Uh, sup, 80s Horror Fan? Uh, Phil, uh, appreciate it very much, man. Um, yeah, so where were we? Uh, she did. She's dead. Well, she's got cat lips. Cat lips, fever. which is, you know, you fall asleep. And such a deep sleep in that. Um, I'm sorry. No. They, they do tell her that she's dead. She's laying in bed. I, I, I'm glossing over that because remember he tries to put the mirror in front of her, and there's oh, no yeah. fog, you know, breath yeah. on the mirror. So he rubs her breast like this. That'll that'll usually wake yeah. a girl up. And she didn't do nothing. So. Sometimes they wake up even before. It's like they can sense, yes. like a cat, that something's coming near it. Yeah, a sixth sense. Boom! boom up oh. with the elbow. That's, what the hell? It's usually what happens to me. Man, you stink of booze. Do I? Let's go, yeah, you drunk. I smell like booze. Um, but but they end up uh, putting her in the coffin down. Yeah, he doesn't even want him to. Vincent Price's character doesn't even want him to carry the coffin. How Bristol and I can do it. They're like, you know, I <laughs> because insist. he knows he's scared she's going to wake up. Right. While they're carrying her down to the uh, whatever mausoleum, the family, the uh, family crypt, yeah. crypt. Yeah. Wish I had a family crypt keeper. Crypt. Um, Aaron Anderson says, me too. Do not put me in the ground. Hell no. That's right. Um, but she's in a coffin, and what happens is he takes this, Roderick takes this padlock that's about 10. Yeah, he doesn't do that right away. They find that later on. He, he okay, locked the hell out of that. Oh, like 10-inch padlock, yeah. Because what happens is he's uh, Winthrop's getting ready to leave. You, you must know, die, morning. sister. He's having breakfast. You must or, No, I think he's just having some coffee. Sister. With, with, the, with, the, with the butler before he leaves. Yeah. And the well, butler says, lets it slip that she had catalepsy. Yeah. He's like, well, maybe she's not dead. Well, he goes, he goes, he goes, do you want anything neat? You know, some breakfast, something. And, and you know, uh, uh, Philip is just so, you know. Got some sausage and so biscuits. So terrible. <laughs> You got some mustard and biscuits. He goes, no, I'm, I'm hitting a Denny's over here. Yeah, I'm going to give me about three of them Grand Slam breakfasts. I think that's where it started, the early 1800s, the first Denny's over in Bristol. Yep, um, in Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's, he's, he offers him coffee, and he goes, a little. A little. He, he just doesn't want nothing, but he'll have a little coffee. You know, this actress kind of reminds me of what like does she a remind young you of? Elizabeth Taylor. She's got that look about her. You know her. what? Do you think she, that too, watching this? She does. Not in her acting chops, but in her, her, looks. her looks. Yeah, yeah. No, that I can dark see hair. that. I'm liking that dark hair. I can hair. see that. Phil's Creepy Video blah, 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 says, blah, blah, uh, whenever I watch your stream, I play Spot the uh, Castle Freak figure. Spotted it. <laughs> Yep, love that castle. You gotta start figure. hiding it then. You know, Phil, <laughs> I'm trying to widen as much as I can. Yes, we need to be 2.35 to one at to get, ratio to get as much stuff in frame as possible. And I've I've kind of got a quarter more in, but 
the more I back it up, the littler we get and the more stuff around, which may not be a bad thing. I don't know. Uh, unless I get other cameras and, and we can constantly go back and forth. Yeah, but we we'll could be figure shifting. And... Yeah, it can be. Ch- when Ted talks, I, 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 I'll switch Zoom it to in. him. Zoom on yeah, this. But anyways, um, yeah, getting back to Who doesn't to want this, to see this mug? Get, getting back to the bastard of a movie this is. Um, yeah, so he goes down there to you know to the crypt and, and things locked up. Yeah. Locked tight. I'm surprised that, well, I guess it was probably a normal term back in the day. Catalepsy. Yeah, not something you hear now. Cataleptic. And no one has it anymore. They, they, and they put that in cars too, right? Yeah, the cat, catalepsy converter. No, the cataleptic converter. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's got to be there. You get in trouble. Yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah, he's he's very distraught and, and, and he wants to... Bust uh, open that coffin. Yeah, guess gets, what? Gets an axe. Nothing yeah. there. I know. She's hidden. So immediately, he knew he's the jig was up. Where is she? And he's shaking him and yelling at him. And he's Vincent's just, oh, please. He says, please, you, fire, right. I can't tell you. Uh, you know, she's safe. Every, She'll be, just leave her be. She'll be dead soon. <laughs> just. He's so intent on knowing or thinking, at least believing, that this house is or the the curse is killing them and relatively soon right there's even a weird little dream sequence that happens late in the movie too very there is yes the dream sequence all the characters that were in the paintings and what come to life what did that remind you of well first of all there here hold on think about that a second yeah also rod uh, roderick took a little tour and was Mm -hmm. was showing um philip uh, all of the paintings that I think he did because he was painting um, his sister's portrait to be next because she's the one that's going to die next. But uh, and he was telling all the sins like this guy was a you know a sinner, he, mass murder, drug rape addict, and pillage, drug addict, slaver, yeah, yeah slaver, all, all, all that. Things. So you know the curse of the Usher family is, is what he believes is is you know mm-hmm. their demise and. and you know, if Philip even tells him, how do you know that? I, how do you know if she leaves this house, she's going to die? You know, mm-hmm. it, and he was just so intent, just very weak and and and, and frail in his character, and, and it just unlike I do Vincent love the Price, end of that but, dream sequence where. Uh, it, and what it, was it, it like? Just, Did it remind you of anything? Can you remind? Because I know, yes. it was all blue and and just the timing, the year. It reminded me of. Dark Shadows. Dark Shadows? Yeah, there was... They they did do some dream stories to on, on some of their episodes, and they would get... Theirs was a little cheesier. Yeah. But yeah they would use some of that color. Okay. It, 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 it reminded me of, like, Dark Shadows in a way, but a very... And right through the middle of it, there's Roderick just reaching out to Philip. You yeah, know, and all the other family yeah. members were around there Weird. in the... Oh, and I also got to mention earlier in the film... Wait, wait, earlier. Remember when they're in the dining room after dinner, and, and, and Vincent Price is playing his lute... Yeah, and you know, he, in the story, it says that that was the only sound he could kind of tolerate, but in the movie, he says any sound is you know, and and that lute or whatever he's playing, I mean, it sounds you like two think, street cats making love. Yeah, you would, <laughs> you would think that would blow out an eardrum. <laughs> like, <laughs> really, this is easy. He's like, on and, my you, and he's like, and you composed this. <laughs> Uh, Phil, Phil's creepy. No, I just did it right now. <laughs> Phil's, Phil's creepy videos in the YouTube chat. He says, I, "I always hate my own videos. I have a great collection, but in my videos, you see two plain closet doors." <laughs> yeah, you, you know, it, work on the setup, man. If if you can get as much as go possible watch one of our first back. videos where it was just the microphone oh, and us God. sitting at a at a little tray table. Yeah, don't we watch our first this. video. Yeah, it, it was like. Just a room and I think a poster and, and one Maybe. toy. And a, it took time. It, it took yeah. time for Dino to eventually dig. get things. These are all his. I, I used to have a lot of this stuff, but yeah. then when I had kids, I parted with it. I only kept the stuff I really like, and I'm not but bringing you, it over here. But what you do, Phil's creepy videos. A little uh, bit at a time. Go do a subscribe on YouTube uh, if you're on iTunes listening. Um, YouTube chat live every Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Um, all you... Uh, uh, world wide fans. I hate when people say that. I'm just joking. Uh, nobody's a fan wide. of ours. But you at least do uh, like toy 
Um, We're big in Uruguay. T- toy openings. Huge. Or, or, or what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> unboxings. Hey, unboxings. Are, I, I, well, no, some of his toys are already open, but he does do a I lot believe of in opening them all. Stuff like that. I but, never believed in keeping anything in the package. Oh, yeah. That's creating you have, artificial yeah. value. You have to bring it. Rip up. it open! D- I, Ted, I, I still... Some are boxed, but just because I'm finding room for them. But you know, anyway. my dad would give me stuff, and it would be in the package. Ripped it open! Yep. Heck yeah, man. What's the point? As long as you saved it and kept all the parts. I've got a bin. You know the big bins? Filled with all the little things that come with Going all with. the toys. Like, yep. like it's, it's cool to, like... Go through and find a hundred different types of swords. Try to figure out which sword goes knives, to what figure. You know, or or whatever, like a little cup or mm-hmm. it, yeah. So many things came in a lot of those toys, and and a lot of those little things I got ended up filling a bin with, and it was kind of fun. Oh, but let's get back to the calypso the, scene. The calypso. I, scene? I mean, um, yeah. Well, here, I mean, she's. Uh, they can't find, you know, he oh, can't right, right, find right, her. Right, right. He searches the house. He's exhausted. He yeah. falls asleep. He's exhausted. And he can't even breathe. Basic. I mean, we're kind of coming to the to the end of the flick here. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, they, they, they confront each other. Where where where, where is she at? Yep. And the. What is it? They hear some screaming or or scratching or. Well, no, you hear a scream. Right. It's it's, it's um. I gotta remember because I watched it three days ago. <laughs> uh, Madeline is screaming. Uh, Philip is running around the, the castle, the house, mm-hmm. whatever the house. Always uh, goes down in the dank cellar. Yeah, he's like, I will find her, and, and Roderick's going, you won't find her. <laughs> Stop. Breathing. And that's sort of in the in the story too. They hear yeah. a, a, just a faint moaning. Roderick yeah, hears like it first this. and ignores it. And uh, but then yeah then they do start hearing. Yeah, I hear that sometimes um, <laughs> when I'm walking on the street and the windows are open. <laughs> um, what just happened? Um, yeah, so she's screaming and evidently she's well. You know what? You see blood. Yeah, she's got blood all over her hands from clawing. Yeah, out of the you, coffin. And and there's sorry, Roger Corman, but. What you did in this movie was was make a, a woman bleed to death, to death because she she was, I mean that's a lot of blood. There was a lot of blood well, all over the floor, all over the. I mean it's yeah. got it's got to be twenty Follow. pints. Even Body doesn't it, have twenty pints. I know we got what eight. Yes, maybe if you're lucky. I think what I don't know. eight pints of blood, right? Something like. I'm that. trying to remember back you in think health I am class. A nurse. You don't remember <laughs> how many pints of blood a body holds? I know how much you can drink before you throw up. How much can you drink? A pint, because it was a in pint. Fight Club. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I can only drink two shot glasses. Mm. That's all we. That's as far as we got in our party we had uh, that, so, what was it, two weeks ago? Oh, I mean, um, yeah, so she was running off into the house. She's gone mad. And she's going, oh! She's gone yeah, mad. I mean, imagine waking up in a coffin, trying to claw your way out. Yeah, yeah. And being held... Whatever, captive by your incestuous brother, practically. I like I like when the part during um, the whole you know uh, Philip trying to find her. Mm-hmm. Uh, he couldn't find her, and he was tearing everything apart. And, and Bristol, the the butler, whatever guy, I don't know, who's been there for sixty years, it's almost his house. He too. doesn't know like where any of the hiding um, places are. But but uh, Philip drops on the bed like exhausted. You know, and Bristol's by him, and he's like, "Get some sleep, get some rest." And I'm like, "Going, what the hell? What you run a marathon? You're that exhausted? He's exhausted. They should have sh- showed a little bit more." Well, they only had like these three rooms. You know, you got to uh, give the illusion of space. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I mean, they use the same. Pl- the same soulless set. trench coat. What is up, Trenchy? That's a- what is up? Yeah, we're just talking a little bit of Edgar Allan Poe and House of Usher and. Um, Coming towards the end of the movie, oh, man, I do want to talk a little bit about Edgar Allan Poe after, but uh, All right. but yeah, um, so anyway, and, so Philip there's gets a storm. Up his, yeah, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. Well, it, it's all gothic. The the coals start catching fire. Everything starts catching fire. Oh wait, you jumping ahead here? Well, yeah, because she's already there. She's screaming. She's they find her. She's all bloodied up. Well, and it's 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 one of the. Scenes you see a lot on, yeah. on everywhere YouTube, where, where she screams and she got blood dripping down both right. hands, and she's like, ah. Um, and um, 
Yeah, she she, uh, she goes after him. This is the part which uh, differs in the books. We'll do the comparison here, the book and this. Uh, again, um, Philip wants to take her away with him still, yeah. but she's become so maniacal and so crazed and psychotic and, you know, lost all this blood uh, premenstrual and um, <sighs> ran after <Tacky. laughs> ran after um, uh, Roderick and starts choking him. Choking him out. And, and because the he's... The house uh, is on fire. The, the, yeah, and the house starts burning Bristol's up. Bristol's getting all burnt up. Phillip's by the doorway looking. Uh, I mean, that is kind of how well, it sort book, of happens in the book, too. She, yeah, she does attack him. I, I take away. It was kind of He gets similar. out. Yeah, and everything kind of sinks into the to the tarn. Well, it, it, and the movie ends the same way. I yep. mean, you know, he, Philip eventually runs out of the house and. and gets, I that because I finished reading it today. Gets, so, oh, did you? Okay. Yes, it, I've, I'd read it before, but yeah. Poe, you got to read. I mean, you got to have quiet when you're reading. Oh, Poe. quiet you know, just because of the language, darkness, and, and a little lamp. I mean, he's right he's not there. hard to read if you just have some quiet and you can focus. It really does kind of flow. The sentences get really long. Because there's always like some parentheses. Sweep and the light, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. But yes, the the house of Usher falls into the tarn, into the into the deep. And the soulless trench coat says, "Oh, yeah." And that was that's that's um, it, man. It's, okay, I've never seen this, but it definitely sounds different from the uh, OG story. Um, this movie is if you like Hammer horror, uh, that old. 60s kind of style. They were trying to borrow it, a little a, bit of that, but Hammer hadn't really like took well, off right, yet. right. I mean, it's it's pretty much gothic horror. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, and what you get in the 1960s, especially with the the color, the yeah. not being black and white. And they would just and, get better. Uh, I mean, Pit and the Pendulum's better oh, than this God, movie. Mask yeah, of the yeah. Red Death is better than this movie. You know, we talked the, the, the while, Ravens but, a comedy practically. Yeah, with yeah. Peter Laurie, Peter Laurie Jack is, Nicholson, oh. Boris Karloff. The Raven is fantastic. Um, I'd say out of all of these the movies that he just mentioned, Master uh, Red Death's my favorite. Yeah, it's probably the best. Uh, the Raven, you know, there. There was so I haven't seen the Fall of the House of Usher for a long time. It's been a long time. I remember this. I mean, I I love this movie. I remember mm -hmm. loving it so much. Uh, me and Ted got a couple different. Varying opinions on this, and he'll say his in a second. But um, I still love the movie. Don't get me wrong, but it was nothing what I remember it being. I still enjoyed it, but is there something that you remembered that? Oh, I remember Vincent Price's character. And see, I could be getting movies mixed up here, which mm -hmm. is why I have to go back and think, because uh, I remember. So much, so many different things, and again, this is why maybe I'm mixing this up with another movie. But him in his black Victorian, uh, you know, outfit, being much more uh, dominating, and mm -hmm. um, his character was a very great character, but just different for Vincent Price. But still loved the movie, whereas Ted. Uh, I think I liked it a little it, bit more than the last even, time I watched it. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. again has been a while. Yep. Usually once a year, once every other year, I you know I give the Edgar Allan Poe ones a spin. The Edgar Allan Poe cycle of films that he did are, are my favorite ones. That um, gothic horror, you know, he's of, of down. the Vincent Price films. But um, Celtic Girl, yes, Hammer Horror, you can't go wrong. Well, thank you. Yeah. About time I hear those words come from your lips. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's just a great time because they're yeah. all coming out. Yep. And you can build up a pretty decent collection, finally. Yeah. So. And if you stick around, uh, we always go live on Patreon. Yep. Uh, right after this. I got a whole bag of goodies. We, we, we'll be talking more. More Vincent Price. Vincent stuff. Price movies and um, sh show some of Ted's. Just smattering. Some, some of his Blu-rays and, and all that stuff. But, uh, again, links are down in the description. Mm. Um and as is, I, I want to talk about Edgar Allan Poe a little bit. What too. else you want to say about the man? Just um, well, I mean, we, we you said got a favorite but, story, or you got I something just, else you want to talk about him? I just think that it's it's so sad, really, uh, that a character like this, who we've gotten so much enjoyment out of mm -hmm. through all of his stories, his poems, uh, and really he was more of a, a literary literary uh, critic for a lot of. Um, 
his well a lot of his life he died at 40 years old which we'll talk about in a second but um he, he was mostly a critic on you know other people's works to, mm-hmm. you know via magazines and and, and newspapers and such uh He's you know never appreciated his own time that never, happens a lot yes never got his due when he was alive and yeah. um mozart uh hell even a folk singer nick drake i mean made three great albums and never got any success and killed himself because uh, he was so depressed. Solace says, loved your guy's burning review. Yes, uh, next week we're going to do another great battle against universal monster creatures and figures. And Dino's uh, going to try to figure out a way to slip Pinhead in there so he can win every round. <laughs> oh, Lava could be Pinhead. Pinhead is, will win them Except all. Except that box. No, no, it's going to be old school, <laughs> old school battling right. each other. But, again, getting back to Ed Grail and Paul, mm-hmm. I, I just thought, for a kid to uh, be born, uh, all the death he went through, and then through his younger... Uh, he had a shit life. Yeah, he had a shit life, man. Um, seeing everything he did. And then just being engrossed in death and everything that revolves it, and um, the grotesque. He was a morose motherfucker. Uh, he, he was he sick. He is He was like a sick Roderick Mother, Usher, almost. Just like Roderick, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he could identify with that character. Yeah, and, and people always... But yeah, he did write some really nice things. It wasn't all dark horror no. stories. I mean, some beautiful poetry in there. I have everything he's ever written. His most his most profitable uh, works, works back in the day, uh, when he was alive, was a book on crustaceans. Go figure that one. Uh, sold out, I think, within two weeks. Whereas um, his other book, which I forget exactly what it was called, the grotesque, and I forget the name of the book, but just nothing. I mean, he just never got his due. And uh, I don't it, have that crustacean book. Huh? It, it's it's nice that we I got, got stories and poems, but I don't get yeah, that. it's nice that we got all of this, you know, afterwards. But you know, his death too. You know, people really, it, it was Mysterious a mystery. Circumstances yeah, went LA. missing like. Two weeks prior to uh, somebody finding him in an alley uh, next to a, a, an old a, a saloon, uh, which at the time they were using as a, a voting establishment. Oh, okay. Uh, That's how so, this all ties in here. Which, you know, they say he... he Damn liberals. It, it was either... <laughs> he, 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 killed, he, he died from his alcoholism. Uh, they found him in the alley and, and just it killed him. Uh, it, Technically, they got him down as brain swelling. You know, that's how what's on his death certificate. But what everybody thinks is because they used to use saloons as voting places. And they used to do a thing in the early 1800s to get votes for the politicians in the you know, area. Uh, it's called cooping. And what they would do is you would get a gang of people who are working for the local politicians or whoever... Um, and they would get these alcoholics who would come out of the bar. They would beat them senseless. They would dress them up in different clothes, send them back in as many times as they can for more votes. Mm-hmm. And that was called cooping. And they believed because he was found in an alley in different clothes at he his time of cooped. death, uh, that he could have been cooped to death. And... You know, that's kind of the story. But, yeah, I mean, what at 40 years old dying, and, and think of what he could have given us if we got another 40. He probably wasn't 40. long for this world anyway, but yeah, I mean, you know, with, with everything that was going on. Interesting. But, I don't um, think I, I read the cooping part, so interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, very definitely. Uh, let's see, the Solus trench coat. oh, I'll definitely keep an eye out for that. I can talk crap about the mummy the whole time. Ha, ha. Yes, so next week... Uh, Two weeks ago, I think we did the battle of like the franchise, you know, Pinhead, Leatherface, Michael Myers, and all that. I think in uh, next week we're going to do the great battle of Universal Monsters. So uh, I think that's where we're going for next week. Um, I got dibs on the Wolfman. Jill Anderson in the YouTube chat. Miss Anderson. Hello, uh, Miss Anderson. Uh, Hello. Uh, Thought this movie was in black and white. Was there an earlier version? I think there's an earlier version of House of Usher. A d- different movie, different Maybe actors. Maybe a different movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, this were... one was definitely filmed in color. That was one of the big 
selling points yeah. and one of the big negotiating points for Roger Corman to do it. I want to do a film in color. Yeah, big draw. So this big draw, particular big draw. version has always been colorized. Unless you were like me and watched it on like Superhost when you were a kid on a black and white TV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, this version always been colored. Uh, there are other versions out there of different actors, different movies, different directors. Uh, early, earlier than this, even. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Celtic Girl says, is it Ted or Dino's studio that you stream from? You guys have a giant store of merchandise. This is... Uh, this right is, here, this is Dino's crib. This is all my stuff, and I'm trying to make it as big as possible, push the camera farther back, uh, get more angles, so... Yeah, I just live down the street. Yeah, he lives <laughs> down the street. I just come over. <laughs> Me and Ted's been friends for hell. Long time. 30, 30 years, something like that. 25, 30 25, years, 30. something like that. So, uh, yeah, always friends till we die, I would hope. Till the end, Heidi but, uh, <laughs> Till the end, Heidi But um, uh, DTN2, uh, horror, what is going on, man? Uh, you showed up late? Um... We're about ready to end. Uh, he says, I am in awe of all the toys and figures on display. Thank you very much. Uh, where this comes from, there's many more. I was going to say, we and, used and I'm to trying have to get, so uh, many. There used oh. to be a competition. I'd cut, you, he used to, live by a, you used to live by a Toys R Us, an apartment by Toys R Us. And you'd see the trucks coming in. You'd I know the, when the stuff was well, coming. And then you talk to the manager and you find out when the shipments are coming in. Yeah. And, and he'd always, like, that was like the late 90s, I think, yeah. when figures were huge. Especially yeah. Star, the new Star Wars figures. We'd hide them in the boxes. Yeah. You know, I'd always Ted. get the new ones before me. I'd, I'd spend my whole payday going from store to store to store all <laughs> over all over town. You were a little nuttier than I was. I, you you travel northeast Ohio for. I hit know, every store on a Friday. Every, every after, Toys after R school. Us just to, to to find them. Get that uh, paycheck. Look for those figures. Hey, bro! Says uh, Mr. Michael Myers ninety nine. What is up? Uh, it's a fun studio. Uh, thank you, Celtic girl. Um, make sure you hit that thumbs up, that like, and, and do everything you possibly can. Um, uh, again, uh, do I, everything you possibly. I keep. Can. I keep. <laughs> I keep pushing Patreon, but get us tattooed. You, you get t- you get another show on there. Like we're gonna end this in a couple minutes, and and we're going live. The, I always immediately. Put, I always t- yes. I always take the link, put it live right on uh, the Patreon, um, and you could watch us there too and have uh, fun and interact. We're gonna talk some DVDs. It ends up being like price. the Ted show because but it's um, always like my crap or. Well, yeah, you know, we'll change it up a bit, but it's always, yeah, you got the Blu-rays, man. Ted's got the goods. I'm waiting, man. Ted's just, got just, the goods. Just a few more weeks, guys, and that new Friday the 13th set will be on. I'll, I'll yeah. bring it for all of you to see. Apologies for showing. Oh, no, to DTN, don't. No apologies. I'm just We're pretty man. offended. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, hey, I get to people's movies uh, or, or videos' movies. What, what, do you think you got some other later. life to live or something? <laughs> yeah. Later, lucky when, I was when on we time. got time, right? Um, I love Daredevil. Uh, is snuck in. Oh yeah, yeah. I know what is that doing there? Dare, Daredevil and Daredevil's Daredevil. my favorite. Really, out of all the Mar- that was such There's, a B level character. I know, but something about Daredevil. When I was a kid, always, nobody read Daredevil. Nobody read Iron Man. Listen, we all have our favorites, and Daredevil just did it for me. Along with Silver of course, Surfer. Of course, I re- oh, now Silver Surfer you know. was the shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the original I, six issue miniseries yeah, is still a good read. Superman sitting over here, and I, I have to get him Look in there. Look at him there, but, uh, I'm throwing in my superheroes. Uh, did I miss anybody? Um, oh, let's see. Give everybody the Jill, shout out. Jill, Jill Anderson says, Have a wonderful time. I will need to remember to sign in earlier and uh, next time. That's uh, all right. Every Tuesday, 9 15 ish. Uh, I always say, give Ted 15 minutes I'm to on get time, down here, ready get to comfortable, go. And, and then we go live. But um, let's see, Daredevil uh, deserves a list. Uh, yes, he does. Uh, I will need to look into your Patreon as well, says Joe Anderson. Oh, let's, let's exactly. hop on over there. That's, Link is below. We are it's going just a live hop, skip there and a jump. in five minutes. What you waiting uh, on, I, Christmas? I, I think we did something. Give yourself an early Christmas. I think we did. Um, Two weeks ago, we did soundtracks. We did soundtracks, and, uh, and last week I did... What did you do last week? Oh, we um, I showed off my expensive 
Suspiria Steelbook. Yeah, Steelbook. Yes, yeah, Suspiria so. Steelbook. So. Yeah, so you know what? Thank you all. Let's see. You need to check out uh, the Funko Pop Zombie Surfer. Very cool figure. A lot of people love the I, Funko Pops. Well, you know what? And there's certain ones. Some of them I'm, look okay, I'm, and a lot of them don't look yeah, okay to me. There's certain ones I'm interested in. You know which one I want to get? Like, yeah. The Audrey Two from Little Shop of Horrors. They have the, yeah, they have, yeah, that, yeah. That's kind of cool. I that's, like that's that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Because it looks just like it. So. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Other than that, I've never so, owned a Funko Pop. So, yeah. We're going to end here now, you guys. And in a few minutes, we're going to be on Patreon Live. That's right. Uh, be there, be square. Talking about all these other movies and Blu-rays and DVDs. Uh, DVDs? So, I mean, Blu-rays and... You think I'm a caveman? I mean, Blu-rays and C- CDs. Walking around Your my CD knuckles movie dragging soundtrack. on the ground. No, I'm joking. Uh, uh, uh. Suburban Cowboy. Rockin' Rodney. All What's right. going on? Uh, I'm late, but here, homie. We're just getting ready to end. Yeah, see, we got to make these two-hour shows eventually. But see, we do an hour here usually, and we do an, another one over on Patreon. So that's what we're doing. We're getting ready to go over there live now, you guys. So let, let me uh, take off here. Let me get my uh, shirt off. Thank you. Thank you all very much for being a part of the show, as always. Uh, Celtic Girl, 80s Horror, Soulless, Trenchy, Jill, Anderson, nice to see you here. Uh uh, suburban cop. I, I, you guys know who you are. Uh, thank you guys all so much.